Can Cursor help me make a good decision on which popular ORM to pick and help me implement it? This is not a straightforward adventure as we will find ourselves getting into webhooks to sync data to our database and the world of ngrok for actually mapping those public webhooks to our local development environment. But overall, it was a fun adventure and I'm excited to share it with you. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'd like to see how much of this I can hand off to Cursor. But I do want you to know that we're starting from a document. And as part of the setup, I set up the um, Next.js example AuthKit app offered by WorkOS, and it is currently running in the background here. Now, none of this data is stored. We have no database. It's just getting this information via API calls, but we'd like to change that based on some of the recommendations that we have here, where we actually store the data ourselves, save for any authentication tokens, etc., that we'll just leave to the authentication service. So to start, I'm going to grab this URL and see how far it can take us. Let's open up a new chat and start communicating what we'd like. Okay, you're helping me build a freshly generated Next.js app. We're using a template that is already integrated with WorkOS for identity using the WorkOS Inc. Node SDK. My goals for this session are as follows. Learn about the JavaScript ORM Prisma and Drizzle and make a decision about which makes sense for this app. Implement the selected ORM into the code base. Create schemas for the B2C model described in the modeling your app post by WorkOS, and I've included that. Implement the database locally using SQLite. Attach your files that may help you understand this project better. Please ask any questions before we start. Communicate precisely and directly. If you don't have an answer, don't guess. Proactively ask clarifying questions to reduce ambiguity. Let's add a couple of these files. Um, when I press this button, it kind of goes up a little bit, unfortunately. So uh, let's see if we can add them a different way or uh, I guess just copy <laughs> copy this out right now and uh, add these. So we'll add the readme, package JSON, environment variables, and uh, let's and let's add the page for where is that app? Let's do the app account page. Oh, looks like we lost context there, unfortunately. So let's add these again and uh, paste our question. Here we go. Thank you. For, thank you for providing the context and goals for the sessions. Before we start, I have a few clarifying questions. Are you open to using TypeScript for this project, or do you prefer for plain JavaScript. TypeScript is preferred. Do you have any specific requirements or preferences for the database schema beyond its what's described in the WorkOS B2C model? I don't have any additional schema preferences at this moment. Uh, just use the user organization modeling. Uh, it's worth noting, however, that this will be a multi-tenant solution. And just to be explicit, because I get these terms backwards uh, very often, one database, many orgs. Three, are there specific features or functions you want to implement that might influence your OR? choice. Yes, our decision will be used to create a B2B SaaS starter kit for WorkOS. This means that the solution should be easy to understand, well documented, and easily made to work with a myriad of production databases. I'm 100% positive that's not how you spell myriad, but we'll let it slide. I'll let you know that I give a slight edge to Prisma because I find Drizzle's corporate voice to be very annoying. And four, do you have a preference for code first or schema first database design? I do not have a preference, but I'd love to see examples of how this impacts me. All right, so we have two new files, a schema.prisma and a page.tsx that looks like it's been updated. Let's read what we got. Based on your response, let's proceed with Prisma as our ORM choice. Here's a plan to implement the database and schemas. So Prisma, set up Prisma with SQLite, create schemas for user and organization, initialize and see the database. Let's start. Now, before we start, I'd like a little bit more more information on why Prisma was chosen. Sometimes that information's hidden at the bottom here, and if not, then we'll ask a clarifying question. This implementation uses Prisma to fetch the user data from the database, including the associated organization. It falls back to the AuthKit user data if the database user is not found. To complete the setup, you'll need to create a script to sync users from WorkOS to your local database. This script should be run periodically or triggered by webhook event from WorkOS. Would you like 
like me to provide an example of such a script. So it didn't answer a question, but let's follow it uh, for this at this point. Yes, please provide an example for the webhook based sync script. Once you're done, I have questions about why you selected Prisma. Now, first and foremost, I'm actually really glad that it, it called this out because I hadn't been thinking about how to sync the data. I was thinking that we would create it once a user's logged in, but that doesn't actually make sense. So let's uh, take a look at it. Here's an example of the webhook based sync script that you can use to sync users from WorkOS to a local database. And that's provided here. Looks like it's created as an API endpoint. As we would expect, the service will call this webhook with a payload that will then handle. So it looks like we're, uh, let's see, Prisma upsert using email will update um, or create a new user. Actually, it looks pretty good. So let's get back to this. The script does the following. It verifies the incoming webhook event using WorkOS's verify webhook function. It checks if the event type is either user.created or user updated. There are several events, so this is great. Uh, it extracts the user data from the event. It uses Prisma's upsert method to either create a new user or update an existing one based on the email address. To use this script, create a new file, which it has done for me already. Add the WorkOS webhook secret to your env file. Configure the webhook URL in the WorkOS dashboard to point to the endpoint, your domain slash API slash WorkOS webhook. All right, now regarding your question about why I selected Prisma, type safety. Prisma generates TypeScript types for your models, providing excellent type safety and auto completion in your IDE. Easy to use, Prisma's API is intuitive and easy to learn, making it accessible to developers of all skill levels. I'm realizing right now how important marketing sites um, and documentation are gonna be in training AI um, and like how um, convincing they're gonna be to robots. Schema migrations. Prisma provides a powerful migration system that makes it easy to evolve your database schema over time. Database agnostic. While you're using SQLite for development, Prisma supports many production databases like Postgres, et cetera, et cetera. And it's easy to switch later if needed. Query optimization. Prisma automatically generates optimized queries, which can help with performance, strong community and documentation. Prisma has an excellent documentation and large active community, which can be helpful when you need support for questions. Integration with Next.js. Prisma works well with Next.js, including support for serverless environments. These factors make Prisma a solid choice for a B2B SaaS starter kit as it provides a good balance of ease of use, type safety, flexibility for future growth. Okay. I mean, I think that most of those things could probably be said about Drizzle as well, um, but I'm not going to cry over Drizzle. There's also a new API that I'm super interested in taking advantage of, which I think um, I might let it know. Okay, so let's uh, let's grab this and uh, feed it to um, our thing. I really like your reasoning. Now that we've landed on Prisma, I'd like to share an additional preference. I prefer to write my queries in raw SQL, and it appears that the latest version of Prisma now supports this. Can you read up on this and adapt any code suggestions? So we're going to paste this link to that blog post and see how things go. Certainly, I've reviewed the article about type SQL in Prisma, and it's an excellent feature for writing type safe raw SQL queries. Let's adapt our code to use typed SQL. Here's how we can modify our approach. First, we'll create a SQL file for our users query. We can inspect. Looks right to me. Now let's update the source app account page.tsx file to use type SQL. See that one? Now I believe that the main difference is it's now pulling it from this SQL query that lives in Prisma SQL now, but the rest uh, looks largely unchanged. For the webhook handler, we can create another SQL file. This will be for the upsert. Very cool, love this. So happy about this. Now let's update our webhook file, which again pulls from that new query. Fabulous. To use typed SQL, you'll need to run Prisma generate with the dash dash SQL flag. This will generate the typed the TypeScript functions for your SQL queries, which you can then import and use in your code. These changes allow you to write raw SQL queries while still maintaining type safety and the benefit of Prisma's query engine. The typed SQL approach gives you more control over the exact 
exact SQL being executed while still providing type checking and auto completions in your TypeScript code. Love everything about that. Okay, now I've kind of lost my place a little bit in terms of the instructions. I do know that I need to NPM install some things. So let's ask it to update. Okay, I'm excited about this direction. Can you provide an updated list of instructions and interventions for me? I need to install Prisma, right? Now one thing I'm, all right, here we go. Certainly here's an updated list of instructions and interventions to implement this solution. Now, one thing that's a little challenging is that um, this sits above my terminal, um, which is a little challenging in situations like this where I have a bunch of things that I'd like to do. Um, and because I'm full screen, um, also not easy to do. So let's copy both of these into our clipboard history. Actually, all three, what the heck. Close this window, close the composer window. Oh, whoa, we lost all that, dang it. Okay, we're gonna open composer again uh, to put it all back. <laughs> wow, that was crazy to watch. Um, okay, so we're kind of in this session right now. Um, I don't have a way to easily jump back and forth. So we're gonna accept all of this. Okay, <laughs> it's a little, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. It's a little uh, kind of precarious um, at the moment. Uh, and then we're gonna close this. From here, we should be able to get rid of some of these squigglies by um, pasting from our history. So we'll go bottom to top here, npm install Prisma as a dev dependency, npm install Prisma client in npx Prisma init data source provider SQLite. Now we have an error here and let's add this to composer. Now nothing got added. Let's see what the problem is. Maybe I need to select it, add a composer. Hmm, not getting anything. Let's just do an old school copy paste. I'm getting this error for the Prisma init command. It seems that Prisma folder already exists in your project. In this case, we don't need to run the Prisma init command. Instead, we'll modify the existing schema, Prisma schema file. Here's what we should do. Open the existing Prisma schema file. Make sure your .env file in the root of your project contains the SQL database URL. And then now you can proceed with generating the Prisma client and creating the database. Except should update your existing Prisma setup with a new schema and prepare it for the SQLite and typed SQL. The rest of the instructions from my previous messages still apply. All right, let accept everything here. Close Composer and open our .env local to paste our database location, which is a file, run npx prisma generate and npx prisma data push. Okay, let's try that. So npx prisma generate dash dash SQL, getting an error. Environment variable not found, database URL. So we had put something inside of here. So we do have a database URL inside of our env local. I wonder if it's not able to interpret the env local file extension, the dot local part. Uh, so let's try renaming this to dot env and running it again. New error this time. See the type SQL preview feature needs to be enabled in the schema prisma file. Now add this to composer. Now the add to composer feature doesn't seem to be working all that well. So uh, let's do this again, paste this in. We should now get an updated schema file. It looks like we did, yes, preview feature type SQL. Uh, let's accept that and see if we can finally get to this through this generation phase. Okay, um, errors while reading the SQL file. Let's try this debug with AI option. We get a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> uh, let's see, nothing in Composer. Uh, okay, just now, so if we open up, if we hit Command L, we open up this. Uh, if you need further assistance, please, uh, okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, please help me debug this code, oh, that's cool that it provides a message with the terminal output. Uh, only debug the latest error, the error message, okay, error state. Uh, suggests that the user table doesn't exist in the database. Here are a few possibilities. Database migration not applied. Make sure that you run your migration to create the user table in the database. Run npx prisma migrate dot, or dev, okay. npx prisma migrate dev. We might need to run that SQL uh, extension on the end of it. Environment variables loaded for env prisma schema loaded for Prisma Schema Prisma. Okay, enter the name of this migration. Um, You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, add user and org. Okay, we got somewhere. Okay, so we got further. Um, let's see if we can run it again. Prisma generate dash dash SQL. That seemed to do the trick. Generate Prisma client. Yes, start by importing your Prisma client. Okay, so these are instructions on how to use it. But I think our code has already been inserted with some of these options. Of course, we had one more command 
command that we were supposed to run, which was uh, npx prisma db push environment variables loaded from env prisma schema loaded database db sqlite database. Okay, cool. So that should be good that we aren't seeing. Um, let's see, let's open this up again, page.tsx. This is still showing some squiggly lines, has no export, exported member get user with organization. Now I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Let's try running this service and see what happens. Okay, so from the front end perspective, we're still seeing everything that we were hoping to see, but I believe that's just getting that, getting everything from a session. So let's follow the next steps from Composer. Once this is successful, you'll be able to use the type SQL feature in your code as we've implemented in the page TSX page and WorkOS webhook files. Okay, so let's go back. We've gotten all the way to um, Prisma DB push. Let's continue on to step eight. And actually it looks like we can jump right to 10. So uh, it looks like in this step, we need to generate a um, secret in WorkOS. All right, so let's go to webhooks, create a webhook. And the events that we were interested in were, what was it user updated and user created. We'll then set the endpoint to localhost 3000 API WorkOS webhook. Let's look at user, yeah, user created and user updated. Now this poses a bit of a problem because um, unlike browser redirects, we can't actually call a webhook in localhost. I don't know why I hadn't thought about this. Um, so let's uh, communicate that here. I don't believe that we're able to call localhost from a webhook. What would you suggest as an alternative? You're right, and I apologize for not addressing this earlier. Webhooks indeed can't directly call localhost. Of course, for development and testing purposes, we have a few alternatives. Use a tunneling service like ngrok. This is a possibility for sure. Uh, implement a queue-based system. Okay, this is, we're definitely not going that route. Uh, use a webhook testing tool, services like webhook site or request bin can receive webhooks. You can then manually trigger the sync process in your local environment. For a B2B SaaS starter kit, I'd recommend implementing option two as it's more scalable and production ready. Here's a high level approach. It's so funny that I immediately ruled out uh, option two and then that's the one that it's suggesting. So let's clarify this. Um, before jumping into a solution, I'd like to provide an out of the box dev experience for anyone using the starter kit. That leans me in the direction of option one, but am I missing something? You're right to prioritize the out of the box dev experience for the starter kit. Option one using Ingrok is indeed a good choice for this purpose. Here's why it's a good fit. Easy setup, local development, no additional infrastructure. Yes, these are important uh, realistic testing, but these are additional considerations include clear instructions in the readme. Yes, mention that ngrok is for development purposes only. Um, you may want to include a script in a package JSON to start ngrok automatically. Here's what the implementation could look like. Okay, so it provides me with a dev webhook option, which opens up an ngrok port. Very cool. Here's some additions to the readme webhook development for local web development. We use ngrok, follow these steps. Fabulous, love it. Keep your workOS webhook TS file as is, since it can handle both development development and production, fabulous. This approach provides an easy way to develop to get started with webhook development without needing to set up additional infrastructure, it's good, okay. However, you're not missing anything significant by choosing this option, the queue-based approach, recommended in option two, is more suitable for production environments, large-scale applications, etc. If you want to provide a more production-ready setup out of the box, you can include both options in the starter kit with clear documentation on when to use each approach. Okay, please include documentation for the queue-based option in the readme, ensure that all the code su suggestions utilize option one or ngrok. Okay, so it looks like we're good. Um, let's close any files that we're not actively working through at the moment. Looks like we have this webhook receiver. I don't know if this is uh, just lingering around um, from the earlier generation. Uh, same for this process events file. I'm gonna ask about these. Do we still need the generated uh, webhook receiver.ts and process events.ts? As files. Based on the current implementation on the ngrok approach of local development, we do not need the webhook receiver. Um, so cool. So it looks like we can reject just these files. All right, and close those. Our package JSON is updated. Wonderful. Let's accept that. Our readme has the ngrok instructions as well as um, implementing those other files inside of an AWS SQS queuing service, which is very cool. Now it looks as though I haven't accepted everything. So let's close.
Compose Composer, just hit Save All. Hopefully that should work. Now let's close this and actually uh, look at the README version of these instructions to make sure that the README gets us everything that we need. Okay, so first we'll want to run npm run dev, which will run the application. And then in another window, we'll want to run npm run dev webhook, which opens up, ah, I need to run npm install first because we added that package.json dependency, but we didn't install it yet. So npm run dev webhook. Now we have an error here. What is this for? npm run dev webhook usage and grok requires a verified account and auth token. Uh, sign in in the ngrok dashboard for sign up and get started with your auth token. Okay, so let's open these up. Uh, let's create, I have my streaming account, so let's create that. Continue. Okay, after going through the authentication process, um, we were given a command to create a ngrok YAML file, but we don't have the ngrok command globally, so we're gonna have to install that via homebrew. And now we should be able to uh, generate that auth token into an ngrok YAML file, which it looks like it did. And finally run that command again, npm dev webhook. Now let's make sure that that did in fact get saved because it sure doesn't look like it did. So there's an ngrok config check that we can run, build configuration file. So let's try it again, running our webhook. And I guess this time, uh, actually debug it with AI since we're getting nowhere. So the error is not related to your code, but rather the setup of ngrok. The error message indicates that you're trying to use ngrok without proper authentication to resolve this issue. Sign up for a free ngrok account, which we have. After signing up, logging in, go to here and find your authentication token, which I thought we did, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was just an example. I'm not sure. Either way, we should have the updated one uh, available to us now. So let's paste this in. We ran the command with our auth token. We should be able to run again, npm run dev webhook. So I looked at the documentation, which I would prefer not to do on some of these cursor projects. However, um, once I properly selected Node.js as opposed to Mac OS, it did give me this option to provide the authentication token um, in as an environment variable, which I think is what our system is set up to look for. Uh, so let's set that up and try again. Also, no dice. It's attempting to use port 3000. I wonder if there's an issue where it is conflicting and no, but <laughs> we do have an issue here that I'm noticing and I'm curious if chat uh, picks it up. Yeah, it does have an issue, yes. However, node index is not part of the environment, yes. So that was a copy paste fail on my part. So let's delete that, hopefully. This fixes our issue. No, oh my gosh, this is this is a wicked one. Now, I am curious for this script, do I need to provide a relative path to the script that should be run? As we saw in that code snippet that we uh, that we pulled for Node. No, you don't need to provide a relative path to the script. The command ngrok HTTP 3000 is correct as it is. The command is using ngrok tool, which is already installed as a web development dependency. When you run npm, run dev webhook, npm will use the locally installed ngrok from your node modules directory. The command ngrok HTTP 3000 tells ngrok to create a secure tunnel to localhost 3000, which is typically where your Next.js application server runs. So we do want these to be the same. If you want to run this command, you can simply run npm run dev webhook. So start ngrok and create a public URL that forwards to your local development server on port 3000. That is true, but but it doesn't seem to be working. And I wonder if that's because I've installed a global version of ngrok. Let's try running it at port 3000. Okay, so our global version does work. Let's open this command again and ask, do I need to point to the .env file? No, you also don't need to point to the .env file. It should use the ngrok.toml file. For most cases, the current setup is sufficient. Okay, I may dig into this a little bit more because I'd like to progress and 
and I'm okay for the moment just running this locally <laughs> and then hoping that we actually get the uh, the data. Now, my immediate question is how do we test this? I believe that we'll need to employ table plus. We'll add our local database, SQLite, and select our database. Let's try connecting. Okay, so we do have a table for user and organization along with the Prisma generations. So let's copy our public link and post it into the work OS dashboard. Now, I think we also got a URL for a web interface to see any received requests. Let's see if we can create a user. Use a personal email address of mine and generate a password. Holy cow, okay, so we got it. And we got it, but it does look like we had some type of internal server error. And possibly this is on the handling side. So let's take a look in table plus and see if we got any new users. We did not. Now we're getting this massive response from what looks like our Next.js app. Now, because Claude is much better at parsing these types of things than we are, um, then maybe we can just post in the whole thing. We're receiving the webhook via Angrok, but are getting a 500 at the application. Uh, this is the output, and I'll just paste in a bunch. Fingers crossed. The error message su suggests that AuthKit middleware is not properly configured to cover the path we're calling get user. This is likely because the webhook endpoint is not covered by the AuthKit middleware, which is, ex is expected since the webhook should not require authentication. To resolve this issue, we need to update the middleware configuration to exclude the webhook. Here's what we should do. Okay, create our or update the middleware TS file in your source file. Okay, all right, that looks fine to me. Update the matcher to include the webhook path from the middleware, exclude, I'm sorry, um, and make sure your WorkOS webhook TS file doesn't call get user. It should look something like this. These changes should resolve the 500 error you've encountered. Okay, let's accept all. Now, I'm not super familiar with Ingrok, so uh, I'm going to kill this, both this and the uh, application. So let's npm run dev and npm npm run dev webhook. Oh, sorry, running this one raw. So it's just ngrok HTTP 3000 right now. Now, unfortunately, we do get a new URL. So we'll have to update WorkOS with this in our webhook, open this up and update our webhook. Perfect. Now, interesting enough, it looks like we can actually send test events, which is very cool. Okay, we have uh, Todd Rundgren uh, that we'll send as a new user, which we receive. Looks like it got, oh no, bummer. Again, not processed. Let's copy this whole big chunk again and see if we can get an answer. Okay, uh, it looks like we're still not covering the necessary paths. Let's exclude, let's make some adjustments to ensure the middleware is applied correctly. Woof, okay, so some changes to our middleware file. This change will prevent the page from crashing if the user is not authenticated. Also update the sign in button.tsx file to handle cases where the user might not be authenticated. All right, I'm fine with that change. Okay, so it's gonna say explicitly to stop the Next.js server, run npm run build to build your application, start your development server again with npm run dev. These updates should resolve the middleware issue. So let's accept all, close, do what it says by killing this, npm run build. We have a new error, unfortunately, and our, and our debug with compose still doesn't seem to work. So copy this whole thing, get it fixed up. Looks like an error in our button, uh, which seems pretty minor probably. Again, not trying to micromanage this thing too much. I just want to get a build out of it. We're definitely starting to uh, see a little bit of a communication breakdown. I think it's just because it doesn't know all the libraries that we're using and is trying to make some assumptions. Now at this point, I feel like we are way, way, way in the weeds. Um, I do think that it needs a little bit of help from TypeScript. And the only way that I know how to do that is to actually copy some of these type definitions. So we're gonna look for WorkOS, Inc, AuthKit, Next.js, dist, and get this type file. Here are the types for the WorkOS, AuthKit, Next.js. Um, does this clarify anything? Thing. <laughs> to which we get no response whatsoever. Wondering why this is being degraded. Okay, in any case, um, it did make some changes. So let's accept and hope that this fixes our build. <sighs>
Hello? <laughs> All right, I just prompted uh, with hello to see what was going on. And it says, apologize for the confusion. It seems you've made several updates to your code base. Is there a specific issue you're encountering or questioning about? I wonder if it's just uh, completely lost the plot at this point. Yes, I'm getting this error. All right, it seems to have snapped back, maybe. So let's accept all <laughs> and hope. We're gonna cross our fingers again. Again, I really don't wanna get into like debugging. I really want it to be able to just do all of this stuff itself. That's what the, this experiment is all about, really. And I believe that we're kind of stuck in a little bit of a loop. And unfortunately, I think that that means that we're kind of done for today. Sadly, not all of these stories has a happy ending. We do find that sometimes we'll get stuck inside of a loop, though we did get extremely far. I'll probably take debugging offline uh, just so I can actually dive into the code, see what's happening, and try to diagnose it myself with some assistance in very acute areas, which is fine because at the end of the day, I am still a developer and this is my project to finish. That said, I am impressed that it got us as far as it did. We got a lot accomplished today. If you like building web stuff with AI, consider following along. I'm Fantastic. I'll see you in the next one.